In this battle, there's hardly a secret weapon. Even in Singapore, once considered a model in the fight against COVID-19, it's come down to disinfecting and cleaning, especially in dorms for migrant workers. Where they eat and sleep, it lives and spreads. What it says about the virus is that the virus can find vulnerable places. It's kind of smart. With outbreaks in dorms, Singapore is now seeing infections by the hundreds. The outbreak spilling into the general population as well. It seemed an unlikely development in an island nation that aggressively tested and tracked its few early cases, even using a smartphone app for contact tracing. And yet... We don't know how they got infected or from whom. There's confusion too in Japan, where they're setting up makeshift isolation spots at the airport. The country only now under a national state of emergency, as Tokyo sees its biggest daily case count yet, and government briefings warn of hundreds of thousands of deaths if nothing is done. With holidays ahead, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is urging people to avoid travel so the virus doesn't spread from one region to another. Japan's strategy of targeted testing seems to have only shown part of the picture, and this public health expert fears the worst is ahead. We will see a potential surge of the transmission, particularly in big cities, and my biggest concern is the collapse of the healthcare system. Yeah, how concerned are you about that? Very concerned. In some places, the second wave appears worse than the first. For those who've recovered, though, the risk of reinfection seems minimal. The war wages until a vaccine is found. Thomas Dagg, the CBC News, Toronto. Well, let's bring in Dr. Isaac Bogosh, an infectious disease specialist who actually spent time in Singapore in the early days of this crisis. And Dr. Bogosh, what's your reaction to, to seeing this second wave in Singapore? It's, it's really interesting to see this in Singapore and even in other places that, are, uh, that have experienced the epidemic before Canada, like South Korea, uh, Japan and Hong Kong, they're all experiencing second waves. And, you know, it really doesn't come to anyone's surprise when people start to mingle again. Uh, there's just the opportunity for this virus to be transmitted in community. So we have to be very, very careful that when we do the same in Canada and we sort of start to release these public health measures, we are aware that there is going to be a second wave and we have to do everything we can to mitigate how big that second wave is. And what about some specific lessons here? Yeah, really specifically, we have to make sure that during the time that we are lifting these restrictions, we have a tremendous access to diagnostic testing. We have to have a really uh, strong capacity of our public health system to do contact tracing, to really make sure that all positive cases and their close contacts can be placed in a 14-day period of isolation and support people while they're in that 14-day period of isolation. And of course, we need to make sure that our vulnerable populations, most notably those in long-term care facilities, are protected throughout that, that uh, process. All right, Dr. Bogosh, we'll talk to you again later in the hour. Thanks. Take care.